Welcome to Retrofact, where we take a look at retro compact computers and other vintage technology. For my first video, we're going to take a look at the computer that made me fall in love with retro computing, the funky and so very 80s Compact Portable 386. Some may call it ugly, but to me it's special. It comes from a time of great change in computing and from a totally rad time period, the mid to late 1980s. Let's set the stage. The year is 1987. Nouvelle Cuisine and Smoking Indoors was all the rage. People were swinging to totally tubular synth music from Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson. The Cold War was ending, with President Ronald Reagan asking Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. 90 star Ricky Martin was a kid in a band. Nancy Pelosi was running for Congress. Donald and Ivana were happily married, and William Shatner got a kiss from an orca. What a great time to be alive. Technology was rapidly advancing as well. Computers, while still expensive, were becoming increasingly more powerful and user-friendly. IBM had started to lose out to computer clones, such as Compaq and Dell. The new Compaq Desk Pro, it simply works better. GUIs and computer graphics, while still primitive, had begun to position itself as an easier to use interface compared to the command line, which was a welcome change. Here's how most people reacted when seeing the Apple Macintosh, the first mass market computer that featured a graphical user interface. George, we've been playing around with my computer here, using it as a terminal, and it is amazing these days how much of the world comes to me through this little wire, thanks to something called a modem. Computer networking was taking off with faster modems. A screaming fast 2400 baud was available, allowing users to connect to bulletin board systems to chat and share files. The first half of the 80s was powered by the 286 CPU, but in 1985, the 286 got an older brother, the 386, which in many ways laid the foundation for modern computing that we do today. The 386 was the first CPU to really allow multitasking, allowing for Windows to really take off. This means your routine of watching YouTube whilst pretending to work in Microsoft Office is only possible thanks to the innovations in CPU design and architecture that came about with the 386. Microsoft obviously thought that their new multitasking operating system was so amazing that it needed a music video. Here's a quick sneak peek. Enjoy. Now, this program is checking memory. I've got four applications all running at the same time, each with its own virtual 8086 machine. That's great. What happens when you switch from one window to the next? Multitasking. I've got several applications looking mighty slick, running under windows. 386. The mid to late 1980s also saw Wall Street culture really develop into one obsessed with one thing, money. Morality was out and drugs and making money were in. Characters such as Jordan Belfort, the main character of The Wolf of Wall Street, and Patrick Bateman of American Psycho showcased the drug-fueled craze that was the norm on Wall Street. So how does the Compact Portable 386 fit into the story? Well, it was released in October 1987, right at the height of the economy in the 1980s. The retail price? An absolute bargain of $12,000 to a slightly more expensive $14,000 depending on the configuration. This machine was marketed to Wall Street executives who needed power and portability at any cost. Designed so that you didn't need to fumble with floppy disks to move your work to your home, you simply took your state-of-the-art computer home with you. For reference, in 1987, you could buy two Ford Escorts for less than $14,000. The Compact Portable 386 was, at the time of its release, one of the most expensive computers you could buy. So what did a computer that cost as much as two cars get you in 1987? Frankly, for the time, this computer was a compact beast. 
It was the second computer available to come with the newly introduced and revolutionary Intel 3D6 CPU, allowing its users to use more complex software that utilize advanced graphics and multitasking. It also came with an optional whopping 10 megabytes of RAM and a high resolution flat panel gas plasma display, all in a portable package of just nine kilos, or that's 21 pounds, down from the 30 plus pounds of a bulky CRT-based compact portable two. So enough of the background. Let's take a quick tour around the actual compact portable 386. We're greeted by the portable 386's delightfully beige lunchbox form factor. The most prominent feature is its pleather handle, allowing you to carry all 21 pounds of this computer in relative comfort. In the luggable position, the keyboard is folded up and locked in place to protect the glass gas plasma display during transport. On this corner, we have the power, disk indicator LEDs, and past that we have the floppy drive that I modified to use a GoTech floppy emulator, making it easy to access floppy disk image files. Here I've removed the hard disk and its bezel to accommodate two compact flash to IDE adapters. Down here I've added a switch to switch between CGA and MDA graphics modes without opening the case to switch jumpers around. There's just enough room to squeeze in a thumb drive and see the GoTech's OLED display. The other side is mostly empty except for the heat exhaust vent for the power supply. And then onto the back of the unit, which has a proprietary expansion chassis slot and projective door, and then there's an RGB port, serial port, and parallel port. To use ISA expansion cards needed if you want to use an external VGA monitor or a sound card, you simply attach the expansion box and it locks into place. I've customized my ISA expansion box to take a sound card and an externally powered slimline CD-ROM drive. The last slot can be used for a VGA card. On the other side, you can see my slightly messy attempt to integrate the CD-ROM drive into the box, but looks aside, it actually works quite well. Finally, we can open up the computer. Opening these two tabs here releases the keyboard, which gently folds out and away from the unit revealing the gas plasma screen inside. We can then release the screen panel from the unit, allowing it to pop up and be adjusted for better viewing. And now for the best part, powering on the unit. We're gonna move to my shelf where my portable 386 lives. Here you can see the CD-ROM drive in action. I know it's not glued in place yet, I'll get around to that someday. And anyways, that's enough of me talking for now. Here's the boot up of the Compact Portable 386 to Windows 3.1 with some nice 80s beats. Doesn't that orange display just look so amazing? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. It would mean a lot to me if you take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos on retro computers. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch.